Hi everyone, this is Quotidian Light, and this is a Birkenstock video. This is especially good for people that are new to Birkenstocks or people that are looking at some of the newer Birkenstock styles who have been using the older Birkenstocks for some time. I'm going to be talking about the difference between the regular Birkenstock footbed, the soft footbed, and their high arch footbed. In, a different, in addition, I will briefly talk about some new developments as far as the difference between the regular size and the narrow size. And so definitely stay tuned for that portion of the video. First thing, for people that don't really know a lot about Birkenstocks, what makes Birkenstock different is their footbed. That is like the whole point of wearing Birkenstocks. Um, yes, they're cute, and there are some styles that don't, because of the way the top is designed, um, it kind of takes away some of the benefits of the footbed, but by and large, Birkenstocks are extremely healthy for your feet. If you have plantar fasciitis, if you have Morton's neuroma, if you've got really high arches that you typically are having a hard time in regular shoes, especially during long hours on your feet, you may want to look into a pair of Birkenstocks. Birkenstocks are not just sandals. They have many closed toe styles. Um, this is the Birkenstock Paris. It looks like a little T-strap Mary Jane. I have two of these. Um, I have this pair and a pair in black. Also, um, I have a pair of Birkenstock Londons, which is close, which is a closed toe style. And they do have a couple styles that are um, low ankle boot styles. So if you are looking for Birkenstocks because you work on your feet, um, you and you can't wear sandals, that's not a problem. There are many different styles of Birkenstocks. As a matter of fact, they even have some that have a different um, bottom. So if you work in kitchens, it, it will have um, slip resistant on the bottom, which is really important for situations like that. But the biggest thing is the insole. When you first get into Birkenstocks, you're going to notice the first thing you're going to look at is, uh-oh, which insole do I get? Do I get the regular or do I get the soft foot bed? And when I got into Birkenstocks, I had a hard time finding a really good comparison of the two. The only difference between the two is in the normal footbed, you have several different layers, okay? You have your suede liner. This is actually suede, but you can't really tell because when you wear it, it gets packed down by your foot, um, by your perspiration, and it really conforms to your foot. So the top layer is suede. Underneath that layer, you have cork, and that is the layer that as you're wearing it, it compresses and customizes the footbed to your foot. So it's kind of like wearing a hard orthotic that you didn't have to pay $500 for. Underneath that, um, you're looking at the actual contour. You, you have your deep heel cup and your contoured footbed. There are other shoes out there that have the cork, but because, um, the heel cup is higher than the toe if you have Morton's neuroma or if you have issues with your tendon you're not going to get the same benefit the, it, this is neutral to your foot and if you wear them all the time you're going to notice the shape of your foot changing um i used to be really into barefoot walking and barefoot running and so it wasn't as drastic for me but your foot is going to go more to the natural shape of feet the natural shape of a foot your toes are splayed out a little bit more your your heel is a little bit more narrow you're going to find that your foot's a little wider in here just because it's allowing all of your bones to sit and settle into the correct position whereas most modern shoes they have a pointed toe and they force your toes together. And so that's one of the major benefits of the, of the shoe. It really gets your foot into a neutral position. It takes a while to get used to them, especially if you've been wearing really tight shoes or regular shoes or you have any sort of foot problems because your feet are not in the regular position. If you look in one of my previous um, videos, I talk about how the first time I wore Birkenstocks, I literally heard my feet go crunch and it was like all the bones for the first time were like settling into the correct position and it took me a while to get used to them. Um, what I will say is I started off with the Giza. This is the Giza. This was probably not the best shoe for me to get used to Birkenstocks in because of where the toe is. This T, this little, um, 
toe bar, it actually pushed my foot forward just enough that it took a little bit longer to break these in. I found that other styles, um, like the Paris, like the London, um, some of the styles that have like two or three straps that go further up onto the foot, the break-in is a little faster if you're new to Birkenstocks, just because your foot can settle into whatever position is most comfortable for it a little bit easier without being forced into a specific position forward or back. I'm not sure if that made any sense, I hope so. Um, so that's what the regular Birkenstock footbed is like. Now. A lot of people complain about how long it took to break in their feet in the regular footbed. And so Birkenstock being a normal company that wants to get as many people to buy their Birkenstocks as possible came out with the soft footbed. The soft footbed is exactly the same construction as the regular footbed. The only difference is underneath the suede layer and right above the jute layer is a layer of foam, kind of like memory foam. It's not that soft. You can feel it when your shoe is new, but it's not like squishy. It's not like wearing a Nike, okay? Um, it's still hard. You want it to be hard. That's part of the benefit. Now, after wearing Birkenstocks for a while, I have determined for myself that the soft footbed is way more uncomfortable than the regular footbed. And here's the problem. Because the soft footbed is becoming popular because it says soft in the marketing and people just being regular use pe people that are used to regular shoes have an easier time going back and forth between a soft footbed and like a Nike versus a soft a Nike and like a hard footbed a regular footbed and so because of that they're selling more of them and being a company they make more of what they're selling so there are a lot of styles right now that are only available in the soft footbed the Paris is only available in the soft footbed it used to be available in the regular footbed that's why this is important if you are into Birkenstocks and you need them for any kind of reason some of the specialty styles you can still find them but you probably need to pick them up fairly soon because they're not going to be making Paris in the regular footbed for a while it appears <sighs> the practical difference I've been wearing Birkenstocks for a while if I get a new pair of Birkenstocks in a regular footbed, they, I no longer have to break them in. I put them on, my feet fit right into position, and they are as comfortable as any of my other Birkenstocks. If I get a shoe in a soft footbed, it takes several months for me to feel comfortable in those shoes. That footbed will not feel comfortable on me until I have packed down the memory foam. Who is the soft footbed good for? It's really good for people with an extremely low arch whose arch has not fallen. So if you never had a high arch or a regular arch, you've always had a low arch, then that the soft footbed is good for you. It's good for people that go back and forth between regular shoes and Birkenstocks, or they don't have any kind of foot issues. But I am getting so many people that are complaining about the soft footbed. They've worn Birkenstocks for years. They've been wearing them because they've had foot problems. They bought a pair with soft footbed and they cannot get them to break into their foot. And this is something I'm hoping Birkenstock is listening because the people that buy your shoes for fun and because they're cute or because they're new, those people are not going to be buying your shoes for a long time. The people that have been buying your shoes for 40, 50 years do not like the soft footbed and you are shooting yourself in the foot literally um these shoes need to be offered in both now as far as the high arch footbed it again is only available in certain styles unless you contact birkenstock directly and you can get them custom made so you can contact birkenstock in Ber in germany and you can say hey i need the high arch in you know, whatever style, Havana or whatever, and you can get them ordered that way. In addition, a lot of people don't realize this. If you have a prescription for orthotics, you can actually send, you can talk to Birkenstock, let them have your prescription. They can make you Birkenstocks in that prescription, which is a huge benefit for people that have more severe foot issues. But what I will say is unless you have a naturally low arch that is not causing you problems, I do recommend going with the regular footbed and going through the break-in process because in the long term, they're a lot more comfortable. That said, 
if you've got a lower arch or you plan on going back and forth between shoes a lot, the soft foot bed is a perfectly good option. One more thing that you might be aware, might not be aware of. When I got my Birkenstock Londons, they fit beautifully. I wear the same size all the time. When I got the Birkenstock Paris, for some reason they were tight on top and they were tight in the toe and I couldn't figure out what it was. I kept wearing them, uh, wearing my black pair and eventually they broke in and I was fine. Then I got this pair and I thought, well, maybe I needed to go up a size. So I did and it was way too big. So I, I sent it back and got my regular size. And again, it was tight on the top and tight in the toe. I went into the store and it's an older store. They have really bad customer service and the lady, I think she has a Birkenstock fetish. So they've got all these older Birkenstocks that haven't moved. And they happen to have an older pair of Birkenstock Paris in the hard footbed. I tried them on. They fit perfectly. So one of the other issues with the soft footbed is even though that memory foam is only like, like seriously, it's like a millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeters, maybe thick. They didn't account for that change in thickness in the other layers. Because of that, there is a slight size change. So you're gonna have less volume, less room for the volume of your foot. So if you've got a high instep, yeah, instep. If you've got a high instep, um, you may find that putting on a closed toe shoe that is a soft footbed is going to be tight on you. And that shoe is not going to be comfortable until you've worn it enough to pack that memory foam down. And frankly, that takes a while because when a shoe is not comfortable, you don't want to wear it. So also because it's a little higher, it changes the way your foot sits in the shoe. And that's why I found it a little bit tight on the toe. And again, once the memory foam packed down, that spot on the toe fit fine. What I did to solve the problem with this pair of shoes was I sprayed the inside of the shoe, um, the inside of the shoe with sizing. I didn't want to get it on the suede, so I covered the suede with like a paper towel and then sprayed the inside of the shoe with a um, mixture that helps leather stretch. And that really helped. But frankly, the shoe is still, I've, I've had the shoe for months and it's still breaking in. And my black pair, it took six months for them to break in. And that's just, it, it, it's, it's very different. So for someone that has worn a lot of Birkenstocks and you get one of the newer styles and all of a sudden Birkenstock feels different, that's why. Um, for someone that is new to Birkenstocks, that's having foot issues, I definitely, definitely recommend the old footbed. It is far superior to the foot unless you have a very low arch that, I mean, some people, their arch is so low, they can't break in the original footbed. And in that situation, the soft footbed is perfect. But the soft footbed is starting to be moved over to all their styles. And so that's something to be aware of. If you see a really cute style that's available in the original footbed, you might want to snap it up because the following year, it may be only available in the soft footbed. Which brings me to another issue. Um, when I walked into that Birkenstock store, I happened to be there when a gentleman from Birkenstock was there going through the new offerings for next year. Yeah, I got a look. And there's some cute stuff coming out, like super cute, female, feminine, delicate looking style that there's one in particular that I'm just like, oh, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, but here's the problem. It's only available in the narrow size. Birkenstock has always had two sizes, regular and narrow. And for some reason, people look at the regular and it, and it visually looks wide. And people are so used to wearing narrow shoes that they're afraid to buy that. And so the company, Rather than educating their consumer, some of their newer styles are only available in narrow. And which is makes no sense because their narrow is not like it'll say like 40R. And 
that is not their regular size. That is actually for a narrow foot. That's not like for a normal sized foot. So anyone that has a wide foot, forget about it. Anyone that's been wearing regular Birkenstocks for a long time, um, forget about it because your toes are gonna be spread just a little bit more. The difference between the um, regular and the narrow, it's, it's exactly the same. It's just this right here is in just a little bit. So it just, it pushes your toes together really which is exactly what you don't want your shoes to do unless your foot is actually narrow and most people's feet aren't. So that's also something. If you're really into Birkenstock and you love some of the smaller styles, you may want to write them because this whole new thing about them offering their newer, cuter styles only available in narrow and some of them only available in soft footbed, it's not going to be solved until the consumers actually speak up and it it's just not, it, it's not a good thing for them to be doing. I understand they're doing it because they're trying to catch the people that don't wear Birkenstocks all the time, but they're leaving their loyal consumers in the lurch. So uh, that is my video. I hope this helped. And on that note, ciao.